deer really messed up on that one. This is a horseshit design. Look at how thick that is, and that's supposed to survive a year or two. Deer dropped the ball on that one. Today is Tuesday, heading to the farm. We're loading trucks this morning. Dane checked at the store in Roseau this morning, uh, waiting on some steel rivets. That way we can rivet the uh, the rubber and get them sieve and, and chaffer put back in the combine. If they're not in, we're gonna have to go hunt some down somewhere in town and uh, try to get the combine going back together. Then if we can get the, the combine to go back together, then what we're going to do is uh, we're going to back the air seeder in there, fold that out, and then we have to start taking uh, primary hoses off of that. The uh, primary hoses are the ones that feed the towers, I'll show you. But uh, we run fertilizer with the wheat, and I think it's a pretty abrasive for the hoses, so they, they only last a couple years. And then on the, on the corners and stuff, they start, uh, they start wearing holes in it. That's kind of the plan for this morning. So let's uh, let's go warm up some trucks and get some corn loaded. Well, it looks like the wind is from the northwest. So we're gonna face west. It's a little breezy out here today. Oh no. I would have laughed, I'm pretty sure. Oh, there he is. His normal cheerful self. <laughs> good morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's usually good morning. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just teasing Bo. He's not that bad. Oh, look at that. We're going to get lights today. Well, good thing we kept them little teepees, like you said, huh? Yeah. Might as well use them. Yeah. You need a fold down ladder here. Well, definitely when it's folded up. So, I had a issue with number 19 last year. We put these arms on, which has nothing to do with the problem, but this little mustache piece in here, right here, it's a piece that goes all the way across, right here. And then there's a sensor in there, and that senses how much pressure is on these, how much down pressure you have and then that controls the hydraulic downforce. So what the problem is with this one, this little whisker piece here is slid out past these, these little notches right here, which is the stops, and you can see how it spins. So what would happen is when I'd lift up the planter, and if these both gauge wheels didn't lift up simultaneously evenly, the this here would get cockeyed to one side, and it would think that there's no down pressure because it wouldn't be on sitting there like this it would sit there like this and then it would want to smash this into the ground well i just have to it didn't do it a lot but it did a few times but now i figured out what's going on so we got to get a new uh a new sensor on that and then that should fix that problem so we got these tack welded on so now we're going to pull the bolts and take this back end off and then we're going to put a inch of Probably good, you know, half half a half weld here, half weld there, and then we'll paint them and put everything back on. We're gonna number them so that way they go onto the same unit, just just in case for some reason, because we put them on. But look how nice that is. Doesn't doesn't move a centimeter. These are them bearings. Look at that. Just perfect. Oh. You think you got a burnt fuse, huh? I hope so. Our uh, little light here. Alright, there isn't working. And we want to use the power to for that. And trying to figure out why we don't have power there. I don't know, it's broken. <laughs> Alright, well, I need to try to get this off. Which has been a real pain in my butt. So here's the cord that goes to that sensor. And then it comes right here to this connector, and I cannot get that off. I'm gonna watch him struggle here. There's not, I can't. Don't you fit? No, too fat. 
there's threads on here. It should just come off, but it can't get it separated. Don't want to come apart. But there it is. See, look, it's spinning. It spins, and then I'm like, well, maybe it's like a coupler, but it's got threads here. Mm -hmm. So this should just thread right out of this. So I spin and spin and spin, and I pull, pull on it and turn it, and I don't want to come out, but yet I don't want to thread out. What's she doing? Oh, would you look at there? Would you look at that? Just look at that. Just look at that. <laughs> oh, look at that. He's got a little stick there to pick up his nuts with. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that should bring that home, too. Yeah. Oh, dropping all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Oh, That's what no. the magnet's for. Oh, I can hear it. They make more every day. What was that? I heard a mmm. <laughs> <laughs> Must be a ma majestic bowl somewhere. Yeah. It's a pretty slick uh, slick idea though, isn't it? What's that? All that kit. With the bearings and the collar. Yeah. It's a f up kit is what it is. Well, it's a fix the f up kit. Yeah. This deer really messed up on that one. This is a horseshit design. Look at how thick that is. And that's supposed to survive a year? Or two? Pretty thin. Yeah. It's Deer dropped the ball on that one, but you can't sell parts if you don't have shit fail. So you got it disconnected. What would you have to do? Well, Bo and I had to pull on this. So yeah, this here was that connector we we're having all these problems with. So it took two guys, one guy to pull on it each way and then put a plier in here and spin it off. For some reason, it did not want to thread off. Oh, it was still threaded on? It was on, but it, it, was it just, it was like it was past the threads. Oh. So it sat there and he had to pull it apart to get it to catch the thread again. I'll be darned. Yeah. Would you look at that? Would you looky there. <laughs> <laughs> so this here, uh, this is your T-handle for your adjusting your, your depth. This here is the load sense uh, for to sense how much down pressure you need for the hydraulic downforce. So this obviously just slips in here like this. What happens is these these arms, these gauge wheel arms right here, that sits in here like this. And then they push up on it and then sends the signal how much down pressure this uh, row unit needs. But the problem was, is that slid in there like that. That's the way it's supposed to be. There's a shoulder right here. Slides up there like that. But anyway, your T-handle goes in like this. And right now you can see it goes like this. And it's not supposed to do that. There's these little tabs right here. And then these little ears. And you can see the gap right here. That's supposed to be all up there and then it's just supposed to be able to go like this instead of like this. So what was happening is I'd lift the planter up and the, if one gauge wheel didn't come down the same, this thing would get cockeyed and then it would, it would send the wrong signal and try to smash the, the uh, roll unit down into the ground. And of course it's the one right behind the, in the very middle. So we ordered a new sensor and that'll fix that problem. Both trucks are running. We got two running today, Steph and Boyd, trying to get some stuff done in the shop here so we don't have all three going. And the fourth guy is uh, off doing some other stuff at the moment, so. What are you doing, Ivan? Painting. Painting? We're getting, uh, touching up the kit that you put on? Yep. Okay. Make it all nice and green again. That's right. And then you just got done putting the gaskets in the door, where are they at? Yeah. What are we doing there? We're putting new gaskets in here and then new knockoff wheels. And then you got to put on new plates yet. Yep. All right. Well, I'll go talk about the concaves. But these Estes concaves. So here they've taken the, the factory ones out here, these three in the back. And then these are the Estes threes. These are the brand new ones. So as you can see, they are even at a little bit of an angle. They're not like a flat bar, like the deer's deer flat bar here. They're flat. They're just straight in line and they're flat. And what happens is they get, they get instead of round, they get flat. They're supposed to be round, obviously, they're a round bar. But with the material that runs on them, they get, they get flat and they don't do 
uh, the job that they're supposed to. And aftermarket ones through Estes, they are a little bit of an angle and they are kind of a Pac-Man style deal, as you can tell. The beauty about these concaves are you do not have to change them. And with the deers, everyone knows, beans and corn round bars, small grains, small wire. They're heavy and you can't just bounce from beans to wheat or whatever if something's ready and something's not. I mean, you'd have to stop and switch everything out to go combine beans. If you wanted to combine beans, let's say you got a, a farm that got some rain, the, the wheat is wet, you can't combine wheat, and you want to switch over to soybeans or something like that. Quick and easy is just uh, switching the header around quick like from rigid to flex. This here is a bigger project if you were to. So a lot of times what will happen, or not a lot, but if it does happen, you park your combines and you wait for the wheat to dry or wait for something to get ready and then you go do that and then, and then switch everything over. So this will give us a little more uh, flexibility is kind of what, what we're thinking. Estes 3 concaves do not need filler plates. So that's another beauty about the threes. There's supposed to be other advantages to these concaves, fuel savings, the, the, the quality of grain that you'll harvest. These Estes concaves will give you 30% more horsepower, 70% more capacity, and also pretty much zero rotor loss. You can pick up your ground speed by two to three mile an hour, and they have the capacity of about 7,500 bushels an hour you know, max capacity for these things. You'll have uh, better seed quality with, with these concaves, especially in corn, um, less FM. So it's a, it's a big deal, especially for us in the northern area here. Uh, we always fight FM because of the, the length of our growing season. We don't get as heavy of a corn as you guys do down south. So FM can be an issue. So if, if this helps, even a little bit, that's always, uh, that's always a plus. I'm going to, I'm gonna show you guys what we did to the planter. For people that don't know, um, I'm not saying we know everything by any means, but we've done a lot of research on uh, how to correctly set uh, our planter up for maximum efficiency. And uh, I'll tell you one thing, it's a lot of little things. Well, let's dive in here and I'll show you uh, what we've, what we've changed, what we've updated, and uh, what I think is um, things that you can do to your planter that are not very expensive. It's just settings, basically. So anyway, the first thing that I'll start with, we'll start on the very bottom. A couple things here on the planter, quick like. I'm um, just gonna go through them for guys that maybe haven't heard it or maybe you have. But anyway, the, the gap on these here is supposed to be two and a half to three inches. Um, that's business card to business card, slide it in, measure it, and then you rotate the blade and then do it again. These here, I picked this up when I was watching like uh, Corn Warriors and stuff like that. So if you know Randy Doughty or have heard of him and or John, uh, David Hula, they're very, very, very um, particular on how planters are set up. So what I picked up on is when you pick this up, it should not just slide back down. You should barely be able to touch it and it should just slide like that. That's how that's supposed to be. And that's set perfectly and that's through shims and whatnot. Another thing is, since we're talking about it, these gauge wheels, these are aftermarket. The deer ones are greasable and you turn them and it moves them in and out, which gets to be too much play in there from what I found. So we eliminated the deer and we went to this and once you do this, then you just, you shim them right here. And you take these off, you slide it in. It's a little bit of a trial and error, but uh, once they're set, they're good for the whole season. They don't loosen up or anything like that. We have a little tool here that we like to use to set seed depth. So this is the tool that we use to set our seed depth. This is set and seed. So you put it on your jack, and you take it and you set it under here, and you raise it up. Well, I'm doing it one-handed here, but... So you raise it up, and then, then this is set at exactly two inches. So that is a, 
a nice little tool. They're not very expensive, and for the money that uh, they could make you, just go buy one. Just go online, order it, it'll be here in a couple days, and you don't have to mess with it. Not every unit is the same. You cannot go along here and move that T-handle the same, the same. Prime example of this is we have two dots here. This is, this is, we've already ran that last year. We're gonna run it again. But there's the dots, that's two inches. Now, this is the same as that one. This one's different. That's down one notch than this one. So see, they're different. This is true two inches, that's two inches. They're not all the same. You can go down here, so that's the same, that's the same, different. Same, same, different, same, different. That shows that right there. I'd suggest building something or whatever. You use a uh, floor jack, jack it up, test them, set them perfectly. Next thing we did is we took the slop out of, out of these. We put the bearings kits in. Now they're rock solid. Well, we're not, they're not tight right now. They're not even tightened up, but once you tighten them up, they're rock solid. I got, we got them loose right now because we're gonna go out on the sand here when it warms up and then we'll, uh, we'll set it in the ground and we have to make sure that we move this left or right so it's perfectly down the center of the seed slot. That way these do exactly what it's supposed to and once we have that set, they're not gonna move. It'll stay the same, perfect every pass. We also took the factory closing wheels off. We put the, the twisters on. These are Yetter twisters on the Beck's book. Uh, they show the highest ROI on any closing system. So that's what we went with. Been very happy with them. Don't need a ton of down pressure. Okay, another thing is obviously with a planter, a big thing is play uh, forward and back. So what happens is these bushings up here, they get wore. Well then your planter, when it goes down, it doesn't ride the same, it, it'll move around on you. So what we did last year is we reamed all these out and we put this uh, ear kit in. So this is a new, new parallel arm on each side. And then the kit has got a bushing in here and then this ear here. So it, 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 the factory ones, they just, they just spin. So then they, they wear the arm out way faster. These here, they are solid, they don't move. Typically it's a two to one. So you get twice as much wear up here as you do down here. We are starting to get just a, a little bit of wear right here and we should probably look at doing this next winter. These are expensive because it's a like kind of a cast iron piece. So we've been kind of holding off on that. They're not bad. There is a teeny bit of wear in them. Uh, your super high yield guys are gonna say, nope, you should be replace them, but uh, I don't think we're to that level, so. Another thing that we did this year now is we're putting new new plates in. The plates that we have started to have little grooves on them. So here are the old plates. And uh, you can't really see it, but um, like right here even, uh, there's a groove. It's a, it's, it's a pretty big one, it's not you don't hook it with your fingernail, but you go up and down, and then there's a whole bunch of mini grooves right here. Well, eventually what that does is it creates a problem for your vacuum. Um, so one, one meter might have a little bit of a different vacuum pressure than the next if it's leaking past the seal. I don't know how much it needs to leak, but they were uh, grooved enough that we decided to put put new ones on. I'll show you the new discs. So here's the box of uh, parts that came. This here is the new disc. Uh, they already sprayed it with like a uh, graphite spray. So that way it's in, but you can see here, there's no grooves, nothing like that. It's obviously it's brand new. So that's gonna eliminate that. And then also the, uh, the new gaskets here that we're putting on that Ivan, Ivan installed right here is uh, that's gonna help too, because the old ones where the, where the seed was running, you could see they were, they were starting to uh, groove out right, right in here. So, and then we also replace the knockouts we do every year. 
they're just a couple dollar deal and they just snap in snap out not the whole assembly you can buy just the wheel so we put new wheels on every year since we are putting new meters in our discs we are going to uh, have them calibrated they'll take these here and they'll put them on a test stand and if I have you guys with I'll show you They put them on a test stand we bring the seed that we're going to be planting with and so they can use the exact same seed and then they set these knockouts here these are your knockouts so what that is I don't know if I can see it it's it's right here it's 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 this thing right here and it's called a double eliminator so that way you don't get two seeds in one hole and uh, this will adjust that and so this one's at six 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 and a half six five and a half so that gives you the, the idea I mean it's it, they're not all the same so like I said before you got to treat this thing as this is its own unit so it's just the little things like that that uh, I feel at least on our farm that we try to do to um, maximize everything we do and we'll do the same thing with the air seeder there's a lot of little things on that that we've done in the past it's a new enough air seeder and the deer has changed a lot of things and that's pretty good now but yeah there's definitely things there even that can be improved immensely but anyway Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.